In my opinion, every man on this planet should learn how to invest and then do so consistently. Now, obviously, that hasn't happened. If I can help just one man gain the confidence and the know-how to start investing, I will have succeeded in what I'm trying to accomplish in this video. Just for the record, I do have an investing course coming out soon, but I do have early access for some folks who do want it in the near future. So what I want you to do is hit me up on Instagram. I have the link below. DM me on Instagram saying that you're interested in the investing course and I will hook you up. And you know, just for the record, it's gonna be $97 for anyone who is like an early bird to it. But if you feel like that's too much and you don't wanna do that right now, that's perfectly fine. I do also have a book, it's called The Wealth Journey. I do break down investing in that book as well. Not quite as well as I do in my course, obviously, but I still break it down a lot where you can actually gain some good knowledge from it. Anyway, let's get into the video. So I'm gonna start off by saying there are definitely levels to doing this and there's definitely three different topics that I'm gonna hit in order for you to fully understand what you should do in order to even start investing. But first I wanna let you know that there's a few things you gotta knock out first. First of all, you've gotta be financially stable. And if you're not sure what I mean by financially stable, check out my video called How to Be Financially Stable. And also check out my last video, which was called Money Advice to Young Men Just Getting Started. I break down a lot about being financially stable in that video as well. But basically make sure your money's right. Make sure, make sure you have a decent amount of money saved. Make sure you're making a decent amount of money and that you have a solid budget going for yourself that you can actually stick to. Make sure you're just not being about useless with your money. Just, can you do that? Nah, but uh, that's basically the, the start of all of this. You wanna make sure you have that security. That's, that's basically your foundation when it comes to money. You wanna have that stuff set up first. I had an emergency fund and a savings account and a decent amount in my checking account before I even started thinking about investing personally because I just didn't feel secure with throwing money at investing, especially when I didn't know that much about it worried about losing it and then not having nothing in my savings account to pad any of the risk up it was just kind of scary for me so that's what i would say if you want to have the most peace of mind make sure you have that but those videos i just talked about go way more in depth to that so check those out if you want to learn more about being financially stable but we're going to jump into this video this is what you came here for so the first thing i want to talk about is there's levels to investing so the first level that i think of at least is a thing that most adults are introduced to when they start working a full-time job because their job typically has a 401k or a 403b or something to the equivalent of that and you probably already have that but i'm going to say this for the sake of this video because there's a lot of men and there's a lot of women who have not started investing in the 401k and they're like 40 plus years old and that to me is terrifying and for some of it it's not their fault because maybe they were never taught about a 401k or what a 401k even is. Maybe they just saw it as an extra expense. Like why would I spend my hard earned paycheck on a 401k and I can just save it? Well, when you save it and keep it to yourself, it's actually significantly less. And I've had to talk to a bunch of people where I work at now about how important it is to set up a 401k. And of course, I can't tell them what to do with their money, but I can tell them what a 401k is and why it's important to have one and why it exists in the first place. So that's what I did. And needless to say, a bunch of people that year signed up for their 401k because they understood then that that is their retirement, that it does have compound interest and that the company actually does match you when you invest in the 401k at a certain percentage so if you are watching this video and you actually have access to a 401k at your job and you have not yet invested in your 401k i would highly suggest at least look into it i can't tell you what to do with your money but i can tell you if you're interested in investing and you know that that is an option for you you're shooting yourself in the foot by not investing in a 401k you're turning down compound interest, you're turning down a retirement plan, and you're turning down your company matching you at whatever the percentage is that they match you. And if you don't know what that means, I'll tell you what it means. A lot of companies that offer 401ks offer what is called a match program. And when they match you, it's basically saying, let's say for example, you work at a Walmart distribution center, for example, and let's say, and I don't know what their actual policy is, but I'm using them as an example. Let's say that their matching program is 5%. So that means when you invest 5% of every paycheck 
into your 401k that they're going to match you. And let's say they decide to match you 50 cents for every dollar you put in. That means once you've invested $100,000, they already put in $50,000. That's a big example, but that's to put it in perspective. You can think of it in any way you want to. For every dollar, it's 50 cents. For every $20, it's $10. For every $100, it's $50. And it's gonna add up. And it's gonna compound. It's gonna keep growing and growing and growing and growing. So that's why it's extremely important to have a 401k. And I think that is a solid base, especially if you've never heard of investing before you started working and now you're working and you're in a 401k, that's a great place to start, but it doesn't have to end there for a lot of us men. It stops right there because that's all we know about investing, typically speaking. And some of you may have heard about this, but I'm gonna introduce it to this video as well. And that's the Roth IRA. A lot of people don't understand the difference. Like some people say, well, what's the difference between a Roth IRA and a 401k? Well, there's actually a big difference. Like the limits on them are different. Like for example, the limit for a 401k as of this year, you can invest almost $23,000 into your 401k if you want to. That's the cap for it. And as your money goes in, it's not taxed yet. So they actually take part of your paycheck that hasn't been taxed and put it into your 401k. So that way it maximizes the growth. The thing is, once you take the money out for retirement, it gets taxed. So that's for your 401k. Your 401k can go up to $22,500 as of this year, but that's for the full year that you can contribute to it. But for the Roth IRA per year, it's much lower. It's $6,000 if you're under the age of 50. $7,000 if you're over the age of 50, but it's still much lower than what you can contribute to the 401k. But the upside to that is, sure, when your money goes in, it's already been taxed. So that's your after-tax money that goes into your Roth IRA. But once it's time to retire, you take the money out that's already grown and increased with interest and all that good stuff and compounded over the years, you take that money out without being taxed. So they kind of play off of each other. So I think it's extremely valuable to have both. I have both. But the thing about your 401k that's really cool is you really don't think about it. You really don't miss the money. The money just kind of leaves. But I don't want y'all to just keep it at the 401k. The Roth IRA, you can decide to put money into it here and there if you want to. You could decide to do $500 a month. That would be $6,000 a year. So you would be exactly where you need to be by the end of the year. Or you say, you know what, I'm not going to automate it, but I am still going to contribute here and there when I can. And then eventually when you get to a point where you can automate it to $500 a month or $1,000 a month until you hit $6,000, whatever the case is going to be for you. But whichever way you look at it, that's an extremely great place to start. Now, keep in mind, we haven't even gotten to my favorite one, which is investing individually, like in your own investing account. Let's say you have a Robinhood account, a Webull account, a TD Ameritrade account. If you don't know what those are, I'll leave them in the description. My favorite one right now is Webull. It's been my favorite for a long time, actually. That's actually the app that I'm using in my investment course because I don't just want to give you the advice in these videos. I want to actually teach a comprehensive course to a bunch of people for those who want to actually learn more about investing. I'm going to, you're going to hear me say in these videos a lot, do your research on this, do your research on that. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to have a hard time getting the research. So in my course, I show you how to break down the resource. I'll show you how to break down the stocks, the companies, all the different terminologies, all that good stuff. And if you want access to it, hit the link in the description. It's a link to my Instagram account. I want you to DM me, let me know that you're interested. Right now I'm doing Zoom calls for those who are interested. Anyway, moving on, individual. This is the part where I'm at right now, individual stocks. This is the part that's really intimidating for some people, but if you understand the mindset behind your 401k and the mindset behind even your Roth IRA, you start to understand that investing isn't so scary. Forget about what you heard about these recessions and people losing all their money. And then, you know, Corona hit back in 2020 and then stocks went, you know what I'm saying? But everybody felt that. I felt that. My stocks went. And, you know, the crazy thing is I had friends who were out here going to the bank, taking all their money out of the bank. And then they hit up their 401ks and took all their money out or let's say half of their money out. When you take money out of your 401k early, one, it gets taxed. Two, you get fined like crazy for pulling it out so early because you're supposed to let that thing sit. That's the mindset behind investing. You want to let it sit for a long time and let it grow. Your 401k is meant to be held until you retire. So if you started investing in your 401k at, say, 21 years old, 
you're supposed to hold that for like 40 years, 45 years even. For one, it counts as taxable income until you'll have to pay like a 10% penalty for doing so. I'm just saying it's not worth it. That money that you're paying to take that money out just so you can feel safe now could have been grown if you would have just held on to it. It's, people have this weird assumption that everything in their 401k is going to go to zero and never recover. But that's not the case because I held on to my 401k and I, I was like feeling it. I was like, man, I'm, I'm kind of upset that my money done dropped. My 401k done dropped because like my 401k dropped, my Roth IRA dropped and my individual investing account dropped. Right. I was really feeling it on the 401k. Right. But I knew the history of stocks and I knew that there's been several recessions, there's been several downturns, there's been several corrections in the stock market. And all three of those things that I just talked about are different. But that's besides the point. They all mean that money went down. And people tend to freak out, no matter which one of those three hits, people tend to freak out. Someone always thinks that it's going to go to zero. Everybody then starts to freak out. Everybody then starts withdrawing their money or selling their stocks. And then the price of the stock goes down. And plus, the environment, the whole world kind of shut down for a little bit there. So, yeah, the stock market definitely dropped, but I held on to it. And guess what? Just a few years later, like a couple years, it bounced right on back and had a strong recovery and is worth way more than it was back then, even before it dropped. So stuff like that is important to keep in mind when we're talking about investing in stocks and investing. Yes, it can be scary, but don't feed into the emotions of other people and everybody freaking out. And then you have these gurus thinking they know everything that's going to happen and can predict the future. Literally nobody can predict the future. Okay. You don't know what's going to happen. But anyway, if you understand the mindset of the 401k and the Roth IRA, investing becomes less scary because I had to think about it one day. I was terrified of investing, but then I was like, wait a minute. And I invested in my 401k. So if I'm entrusting my money to go there and basically be my retirement plan, why can't I trust myself to learn about how to invest in stocks on an individual basis so that I can grow money even more on the side? If I do it right, it's not that it's super risky and super unsafe and I'm going to lose all my money. It's actually a smart thing to do. Then I read a bunch of books and listened to a bunch of books and watched a ton of YouTube videos and did a ton of research. And then I just actually started doing it myself and trial and error, trial and error. But I ended up figuring it out and it's actually not super, super hard. I'm not like a guru or anything like that. I'm not like a professional financial advisor or anything like that by any means. I'm just saying I'm a guy who caught on and got really good results when investing. So my biggest advice to you if you're interested in investing, it's simply this. If you're new, maybe stay away from individual stocks. Like there's a bunch of stocks that people will name off saying, this is the hottest stock of the year. This is gonna be worth $800 in two years. And right now it's only worth $50. Like we don't really know what's gonna happen with that. I used to buy into that myself, but after I saw the negative effects, I backed off and stuck to my original plan. And that's simply to, at first, stick with ETFs. ETFs are your best friend. If you look at your 401k, if you really understand how to break it down, you can actually look up your 401k on Google and you can look at what securities are inside of your 401k. And as you look at the top, let's say top five of what's in there, you start to understand that that's what's carrying your whole portfolio. You start to understand, oh, these are the companies that are within my 401k. And I'm not saying that you should necessarily invest in all of them, but what I am telling you is there's a way to break things down in such a way that's easy for you to understand. Because your 401k is basically just a big fund. It's just managed by someone else, right? An ETF is a little different. An ETF, an ETF is not managed by a human. It's managed by an algorithm. And the algorithm is smart enough to actually switch out companies. So if a certain company in that ETF isn't cutting it, let's say an ETF has 200 companies in it. If like, Let's say a few of those companies aren't cutting it. They get taken out of the team and replaced with better players. That's essentially what happens. So I would say learn as much as you can about ETFs. Learn about the different types of ETFs because 
there's a few types. There's a broad-based ETF, which encapsulates a bunch of different sectors. And if you don't know what sectors are, I know I'm dropping a lot of knowledge on you right now, but just, just hear me out. If you don't know what sectors are, think about stuff like healthcare. Think about stuff like energy, technology. Think about iPhones, Microsoft computers. When you start thinking about certain products, you can start to associate them with certain sectors. And then, on the other hand, there's specialized ETFs. You know, and then on the other hand, there's specialized ETFs that are just specific to one sector. Technology might have a specific ETF. Utilities and healthcare will have a specific ETF. It's up to you what you think is best and most lucrative for you, but that's where the research comes in, and that's where my course comes in to help you understand how to research these things and how to understand what the overall value of the stock is and how well it's been doing and and pretty much what you're getting yourself into when you buy a stock. You don't just want to buy a stock just because this one guy tells you to. You want to be able to be to a point where no one has to tell you what to invest in. You know what to look at and what to look for in order to make a smart investment decision that you can hold for the next 20, 30, 40 years. It's not about just investing today and then watching it go up next month. Or next year and then selling it right then and there like sure you can make money off of that but that's fast money the whole point of this is generational wealth and making as much money as possible the way you do that is by holding your stocks for a long time so etfs are your best friend and as you get more comfortable with the etfs and you start getting good returns from the etfs on the side make sure you're learning about the individual companies and learning you know it's going to be more risky because it's literally putting all your eggs in one basket as opposed to putting it in a basket that has multiple stocks in it, right? Because that's what an ETF is. It's a basket with multiple stocks in it. But if you do an individual stock, like say Apple, for example, you're, you're betting all your chips on Apple. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to be confident and understand what you're getting yourself into and what the risk to reward ratio looks like. So start with ETFs. And then if you want to add individual stocks, you can start with one or two and then go from there, or three or four, or whatever. But I personally don't invest in more than six individual stocks. Currently, I'm only holding four, plus a few ETFs. But you get what I'm saying? I did a tremendous amount of research with those. You don't want to be that person who has 20, 30, 40 individual stocks and then no ETFs. Because you know what? Chances are you're not better than the algorithm that really smart people put together for that ETF to operate off of and know what companies are going to be the highest performers and give you the best bang for your buck when it comes to investing. So you're better off investing in an ETF that has the 20 to 40, but a lot of ETFs actually have 200, 500, even a thousand stocks within the ETF. Some are on the cheaper side per share, and some are on the more expensive side. The ones that are more expensive, a lot of times are more expensive for a reason. So you, you don't, that's not something to really cheap out on. Again, this is investing. And when you invest, you have to keep the future in mind, not just how you feel about it right now. And again, make sure you're financially stable before you even start investing. So that way you don't start playing mind games with yourself, talking about some, oh, this is too expensive, this is ridiculous. Everything's ridiculous. The point is to grow your money now. So in the future, when things are even more ridiculous, you have something and more and more that's been compounded for you. You'll get to a point where you're investing and you look at your account and some days you would have made more in your investing account than you made at work that day. It happens like that, but you got to do it consistently and you and you have to be dedicated to it and learning and continuously feeding yourself information. It doesn't take long. On your rise to work, you can be listening to information about your favorite company that you're invested in or your favorite ETF, understanding the nuances and understanding the differences between certain ETFs and stocks. And uh, I'll just say this, if you don't know where to get started with an ETF, start off with something that pretty much every YouTube channel and every article has ever said. You want to start very generic and very simple. The S&P 500 is a great rule of thumb. That is, that is the index that has stood the test of time throughout recession, downturn, anything you can think of. So look up ETFs that coincide with the S&P 500. So, go, so look up a bunch of ETFs that track 
the S&P 500 index. And then from there, look at what the options are, look at what the prices are, and then just start making a plan to start investing if you can afford to do so. That's what I would highly, highly suggest if you've never done it before and you don't know what to look into. Just just look into that. Look into the S&P 500 ETFs and see what comes up and then read about it. Read what the S&P 500 is. I don't have enough time in this video specifically to tell you all about it, but I do break it down very specifically as well as a bunch of other funds in my course. Early birds get it for 97 bucks, and that's for lifetime access. And right now I'm doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with this to actually show you and break everything down. So if you have any questions after you walk through the videos and through the PowerPoints, I'm here to help you out with those questions. And that comes with this last piece of advice that actually solidifies this whole message. Treat your investing like it's a bill. You know, some of you wouldn't be caught dead not paying your rent or not paying your car note or not paying your light bill. It should be the same situation for your investing. And a, a while ago when I made my videos about saving money and that type of content to really nail people down on understanding how to save and how to automate, I always said this, pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. The way you do that is you treat yourself as a bill. Like, no, I'm the most important bill I have. I'm paying myself first. For me, I believe in God, so I pay God first, actually, then I pay myself, and it's an automatic exchange, like, I have it down to the date, I have it down to the date, transfer X amount of money from this account and move it over to this account, and that's me paying myself first. I don't have to think about it, because I already, I only had to think about it one time, I scheduled it up in my bank account, boop, 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 and I have a video showing how to do that. It's called How to Double Your Savings. But I scheduled that in my bank account, and then boom. Now it just every every single time I get paid, boom, boom. That's how it is for your 401k. And so once you start investing more and getting more serious about it, you should have a certain amount just boom, boom, investing for you like that. And a lot of investing apps don't have that functionality where they can do uh, automations for you to invest in certain things, but... Webull does. Webull actually does let you automatically invest in their securities. And at the very least, you could at least have money automatically transferred to the investment account, and then you still go up there and you select what you want to invest in. But that's what your 401k does, and that's what builds a lot. And for you, that's going to be your biggest source of income when it comes to investing. But in your own time, automatically invest and treat it like it's a bill. Treat it like it's something that is a must-do, like your life depends on it. Because your life might not depend on it right now, but your future just might. You never know. Anyway, this video has been a little longer than I expected it to be, but I just wanted to share this message with you because I, I genuinely believe that if more men knew how to invest, this world could be different. And that's nothing against the ladies by any means, but I'm just saying if you're looking demographic-wise, more men on the internet tend to be more into topics like investing. So this message is directed specifically for you, uh, especially if you're scared or skeptical about investing. I understand I've been there, but there's some things in life that you have to face. And what if I told you on the other side of that fear was actually a brighter future? Think about that. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.